previous video, we had done a few in-text questions related to the various developments leading to the Bohr's atomic model. In this video, we are going to be talking about atomic spectra. So it's a rainy day and the weather is perfect. There's a slight drizzle. You can still go out and suddenly the sun starts to shine. You notice on the opposite side of the sun, a beautiful rainbow. So this phenomena of light splitting into its colored bands is called dispersion. In our environment, we observe it as a rainbow. In a lab, we observe it using a prism. So what happens is we this particular conclusion led to sorry this particular concept led to the conclusion that white light is composed of electromagnetic waves and these waves have different wavelengths. So if you notice, you have red, which has the longest wavelength and is on the top and it has the lowest frequency whereas violet is has a very short wavelength but it has a very high frequency so the light is getting split into its um into its component and this particular concept is called as dispersion that is what we have learned in optics in grade 10. so one thing you need to remember or notice that is that when, when you observe a rainbow, you do not know, I mean, the colors might not be very well defined, but you notice that there are no gaps in between the colors of the spectrum. And this is the reason this is called a continuous spectrum. So continuous spectrum is the one which does not have any gaps in between. When atoms or molecules, when they interact with radiation, they get excited. And this is because they absorb energy and they're unstable. So when they absorb energy, they become unstable. And so they will have to come back to the original state. And when this particular thing is observed, this spectrum will have bands. If you notice over here, you have certain bands over here and here and here. So this and this are quite different from each other. And this is called as a discontinuous spectrum. So discontinuous spectrum. So basically you have two different types of atomic spectra, emission spectra and absorption spectra. As the name suggests, emission spectra is the radiation emitted by a substance. So when I told you, right, uh, atoms when they or molecules, when they absorb energy, right, uh, they absorb energy, they will get excited. They absorb energy by two, two ways. One is either by passing an electric discharge through the gas or heating the substance to a very high temperature. So this sodium, so this is the emission spectra of sodium, which gives two important lines at 589 and 589 nanometers and 589.6 nanometers. So here, the, here, you have the energy, which is, so when a particular atom is getting hit by the radiation, it will absorb certain amount of energy and it will emit it out after it, uh, because it, the absorption state is the excited state and it is unstable. So this is emitting of the radiation and that is the emission spectra. Whereas the absorption spectra, when is the opposite, right? So the missing wavelength. So basically, when it absorbs a certain amount of wavelength, that appears as dark bands on the spectra, and that is called as the absorption spectra. No, remember when you talk about emission and absorption spectra. Suppose we talk about emission and absorption of the same element, then, uh, then. It, the lines, in case of emission spectra, you'll have two bright lines at the same place. Absorption, you'll have two dark lines. So, for example, in case of sodium, as we saw over here, sodium shows two important lines at 589 nanometers and 589.6 nanometers, no matter what its source. So, in emission spectra, it gives two bright lines. In absorption spectra, it will give two dark lines. And that means that this particular wave frequency, or oh, sorry, I'm sorry, this particular wavelength is a fingerprint. So each element will have its own absorption and emission spectrum, okay? And it is characteristic for that particular substance. So uh, this particular study of emission and absorption spectra is called as spectroscopy. And organic chemists especially 
use it for the identification of various compounds, checking purity of various compounds. And it's a very useful technique which helps us determine what that particular sample consists of. So it, it is used and you have various types of spectroscopy that exists. So you have uh, NMR, IR. So this is, again, depending upon the wavelength of the light which is being used. Okay, so for example, NMR uses radio waves, IR uses infrared, so UV uses ultraviolet. All of these give us the information, various information regarding the particular substance and it is extremely useful. So in this video, we learned about the continuous spectrum. Our spectrum of light basically is a continuous spectrum. You do not, the electromagnetic um, radiation does not have any gaps in between with GR. So in between violet and indigo, you do not have a white space or a dark space. It's, it's almost as though it's like, it's all joined together. And more than anything, you might not see all the colors well defined when you look at a rainbow, but you will be able to notice that there are no gaps in between the various wavelengths. Um, sorry, various light colors. Second, we learned about discontinuous spectrum. Discontinuous spectrum exists because of the atomic and uh, because of atoms and molecules. So when you have this discontinuous spectrum, it will be shown as gaps or it could be dark bands or it could be a very bright band. So there are two different types of atomic spectra, absorption and emission spectra. The reason you have a discontinuous spectrum is because when an atom or a molecule is hit with radiation, it gets excited, okay? And when it, when this get, because this getting excited, this gets excited, it has to come back down to its original state. When it comes back to the original state, it emits some amount of radiation. And this radiation is observed as emission spectra. And the radiation which it absorbs to get excited is, is uh, observed by atomic spectra. With this, we finish the atomic spectra of, or the basic idea behind atomic spectra. The next video, we will be studying or learning about the various, or the line spectra of hydrogen.